So number one says six papers are placed in a bag with names on them. The names are Lynn, Mai, Mai, Noah, Priya, and Priya. If one name is chosen at random, what is the probability that it is Priya? So we see that Priya is actually in the bag two times. And then out of count the total number. So one, two, three, four, five, six total names. And two over six is answer D. That could also reduce to one third if that had been an option. Number two, select all of the words for which the probability of selecting the letter E at random is one third. So we want to select the letter E out of the total number of letters. So in part A, E is one out of three letters. So that would be one third. Number, um, letter B, E is one out of four. So that's not one third. In C, we have one, two, three E's out of six total letters that reduces to one half. So that is not one third. D, there are two E's out of five letters. That is not one third. E, there are two E's out of six, which does reduce to one third. Number three, um, you'll have to design a situation where the probability of one event is one fifth and another is one tenth, and then just explain your reasoning. So whatever, whatever um, you want, it could be a spinner, it could be a word. Um, so if you were doing a word, maybe you're looking for a 10, a 10 letter word and you could just make up the word. It doesn't even have to be an actual word. Um, but, it, or I suppose you could just say you're putting letters in a bag. Okay. So if I was just going to, let me type this out. Okay. Um, I am going to place the letters, um, A, A. B, C, D, E, how many is that? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 um, letters in a bag. So here's the letters in my bag. We've got two A's and then one of each of the rest of them. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So I have 10 letters total. One of them is in there twice. So I could say what's the probability of selecting the letter A. And then my other um, event could be the probability of selecting one of the other letters. So selecting the letter B. So for selecting the letter A, it would be a two out of 10 chance since there are two A's out of 10 choices, which would reduce to one fifth. And then for selecting the letter B would be one out of 10 chances, which doesn't reduce. So you could do something like that, okay? You could do a spinner and um, split the spinner into 10 equal, um, 10 equal slices and just state that they're equal slices and then label them. And maybe this time you don't wanna repeat a letter or a number, so maybe you have numbers on these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So maybe um, your first event is the probability that you select or that you spin a one. Okay, so then that's going to be one out of ten. Um, or maybe you do the, the probability that you spin um, a one or a two. So now there's two options up there. Okay, so you can land on this one or this one and you win. So that's two out of 10, which is a one fifth probability. So could get creative. Those are just two options that would work. Number four, what is the probability of a spinner landing on the section labeled B? So we see that this section is half of a fourth of the circle. So this is one eighth of the circle. So the probability that you would land on that is one eighth. Number five, if a spinner, if a spinner is spun 300 times, estimate the number of times it would be expected to land on B. So we again see that B is one sixth of the circle. So it would be expected that it would land on there one sixth of the times that it's spun. 
So one sixth of 300 would suggest that it should be um, landed on 50 times. Number six, the circle has a radius of five units. For each angle measure, find the area of the sector of the circle, okay? Pi rate, now there's multiple ways you can do this. So there is an area formula for radians, which says to do one half times the radius squared, um, whoops, not theta, the sector area, equals one half times the radius squared times theta being measured in radians. So you could certainly um, do that. You can also think about how big pi radians is um, because in this case, pi radians is a pretty easy measurement to think about since it's half the circle. So we know that if we just did the area of this whole circle, which is r squared times pi, we could just cut that in half and that would be um, the area for half the circle or for a pi radian angle. And so we could just do 25 pi divided by 2. You could also write 12.5 pi. Um, again, if you used this formula, that would work out just the same because you're going to do 1 half times um, r squared, which is the 5, so 5 squared, and then times theta, which was pi. So then that's going to equal 25 pi on top and then 2 on bottom. For three radians, three radians is maybe a little bit less obvious to do um, in this kind of red way. So doing the art, doing the sector area formula might make some more sense. One half times the R squared times theta, which in this case is three radians. So on the top here, we would get 25 times three, which is 75, and then two on bottom. Um, so the area here, would be um, 37.5 units squared and units squared for each of these two. Uh, certainly could do, you know, the portion of the whole as well. We've got three radians out of the whole radian um, way around the circle is two pi and then times the area. So then those pi's would cancel out and that's where that 75 divided by two is coming from so you could do it that way as well number seven select all formulas that could be used to find the area of this sector the angle is measured in radians okay so we know the angle is measured in radians so as i kind of just look at these i know that c is not going to work out because that's doing a theta out of 360 which would be a degree measure so this would be if theta was in degrees we just used this formula, that sector area equals one half times r squared theta. So I know that that one is correct. So if I analyze part B, this is doing theta out of two pi. So it's doing the theta is part of the angle, two pi is the whole angle. So they're taking the fraction of the circle we have and multiplying it by the area formula. So we know area of a circle is pi times radius squared. So they're just proportioning it out of two pi. So that one is good. Then in um, part D, they are doing pi squared over R times theta, which doesn't make any sense. And then in this last one, they are looking at the angle out of two pi, which is good. Okay, so they're comparing theta and radians to the whole circle in radians. But then this part, is the circumference. So what they're doing in this one is actually getting the arc length instead of the area. All right, then number eight says triangle ABC is shown. Let me make this just a little bit smaller. Triangle ABC is shown with an inscribed circle with a radius of four. Centered at D, the inscribed circle is tangent to AB at G. Okay, so we know that the radius is 4. We know it's tangent here, which means we get a 90 degree angle. Okay, tangent to the radius. The length of AG is 6 and the length of BG is 8. What is the measure of angle B? So we want the measure of angle B over here. So we know in an inscribed 
um, circle that the angle bisectors meet at that point. So if I connect point D to B, that's an angle bisector. So we know that this angle is half of the full angle B. And then since we know that this is a right angle, we could look at using trig. So from this angle here, four is the opposite, eight is the adjacent. So we know we can set up an arc tan function of four over eight will equal half of that angle B. Okay, will equal that theta. And when I look in the answer, I kind of see stuff like this, but I see the one half, I see it reduced to one half. So they reduced arc tan of four eighths to one half. Now remember that's just half of this angle, so we need two of those. So two times the arc tan of one half would be that whole angle B. Then number nine, select all um, true statements. So first looking at these answers, we see some different things about angles and sides. Um, so let's go ahead and just look at this triangle first, see if we can fill anything in that we know. So we know that this is a 90 degree angle and this is a 60 degree angle. So that leaves 30 degrees left over for angle C. So I know that to be true. Um, this triangle, if it had 60 here, also came from a an equilateral triangle. So we could look at it kind of like this as the other half of the equilateral. So if we had that, I would know this was 60, this was 10, the total here was 10, split in half would give me five for each of these sides, okay? Um, and then I could do the Pythagorean theorem to get this um, altitude here. You may also remember that that side is equal to this shorter side times the square root of three. So angle C is 30 degrees, and again, let me get rid of some of this stuff now, but that's just how we can kind of remember back to how we end up with this AB is half of CB. Um, so we knew that was half of CB. You could do Pythagorean theorem to get this or use your 30, 60, 90 formulas. But angle C is 30 degrees, that's true. AC is five, that is false. AB is five, yes. Okay, so this shorter side is half of the hypotenuse. AC is five square root two is false because it is five square root three. The square root two came into play if you had a 45, 45, 90. So if we knew that those two angles were 45, if we knew that this side was five, the hypotenuse would be five times the square root of two. And this other leg would be the same. But that's where they're throwing that square root of two in.